Hello, everyone, and welcome back to No Cabin Fever today. Um, with us today is David Toussaint from Comunado, and he will tell us a little bit about SharePoint, SharePoint Online and Confluence, our best friends, and how to get the, most, uh, the best out of both worlds. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to David. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Hi, everyone. Yeah, as already introduced, um, I will share something about how to get the, both, the best. <laughs> That was that was back then. Um, the best out of two potentially conflicting tools. So, um, so this is the title of our presentation. And I guess I guess some of you are using SharePoint. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in this talk. Um, and some of you may have wondered, why do I need SharePoint while when I have Confluence, or why do I need Confluence? I'm having SharePoint. SharePoint has a wiki. Um, I show you why you would probably need both. Um, and how to get the best out of the two worlds. Um, as a quick introduction, um, Comunado is a marketplace vendor in the Atlassian marketplace, and as well as a solution partner. I'm working as a co-head as product um, at Comunado, and so in this role, I'm presenting you one of uh, the use case for one of our apps here. Uh, and then there we go. Um, why do we need why do we need a, a combination of the two tools at all? Um, because have you ever tried to manage uh, documents in Confluence rather than uploading single attachments? You can do that, but it's not really fun. And SharePoint really excels at that. On the other hand, SharePoint also has a wiki and whoever has used that may say that's not really as easy to use as Confluence <laughs> to to be honest here. So that's what I mean by getting the best out of both worlds. Each tool is specialized in one of the other um, aspects and that's why we're trying to leverage the best of the two. And also we avoid duplicate content by having a single source of truth. I'll show you how that works in a few seconds um, because you, we're, we're going to integrate content from the on tool and into the other so we don't need to switch. Um, and in the end, if you, if you want to build a digital workplace based on Confluence and SharePoint or maybe OneDrive, um, you, you basically need some sort of integration here. And that's what we're going to talk about. Um, yeah, so that out of the way, I'd say I have a quick demo here. Um, let me switch to my demo instance. This should be here. Um, so what you're seeing here is a Confluence Cloud instance. Um, and I'm organizing, say, little story, it's not really me, but say it's me. I'm organizing a summer party for our company for this year. Unfortunately, this just got canceled this week. So it's kind of a fictional summer party, um, but let's stick to the, let's make it, make it a Christmas party or so. Um, and we're having an organizational team and it's listed here, some colleagues of mine. Um, we have a location where this is supposed to happen and as a Christmas party, it's not going to be in June, but let's stick with that for now. And there are some, some tasks here that we're gonna check. Um, apparently none of that is done yet, but we got some time until Christmas, I guess, so. And so while, well, me and my team, we can perfectly uh, organize the whole thing here in Confluence and just adding adding comments on wiki pages and editing pages and like uh, like I said already. But at some point in time, we get some documents in, into the game. Like we have an offer for from the location that we need to sign or maybe discuss a few details about, or maybe we have an Excel sheet where we uh, calculate things like how many seats do we need, how many spaces, uh, what kind of food, stuff like that. And that that's, is what you can do in Confluence, but it's not really fun. So for that reason, um, we embedded uh, a presentation here. In this case, it's a PowerPoint presentation, because we, as you may have seen here, we wanna, for the, for the children, so that uh, they, they are entertained and all the parents can focus on the, uh, on the real Christmas party, we wanted to have some uh, some magician who is uh, doing some fun stuff with the kids. For that, we have a presentation in here, and it's not really that sophisticated, but for the sake of uh, presenting, it's fine, I guess. And this presentation is actually coming directly from SharePoint. So if you if you see that here, the PowerPoint icon, if I click on that link, a new tab opens, 
and I prepared this, to be honest, I'm logged in and stuff like that. But um, you see, I'm directly taken to the PowerPoint web app, which is where I could edit my PowerPoint, like adding new slides and all, basically everything I can do in the desktop app. It's really working quite well, to be honest. So, um, so while uh, if I want to just consume the presentation, it's perfectly fine in here, but if I want to change anything, there's a direct link to do that. Other than that, I can just click through that, and it's the same with Excel files, for example. So this is the this was the PowerPoint slide, and then again we had all other files, and that PowerPoint is in here as well. It's the Design Magician uh, PowerPoint that's highlighted here. But you get you get other folders like let's dig into the catering and see what the catering offer for this uh, event is, and then we have an Excel file and some calculations for how many people and stuff like that. And it's probably going to be pretty expensive catering as I see that. Um, so, and as I did with a, um, with a PowerPoint presentation, I could also do that with a catering offer. And then I'm gonna quickly show you how that works, edit the page. And then you see here are the two macros that are in the page already. that and I just need to add something from SharePoint and you see it's two macros the one is the document the single document macro the other one is the list and I'll stick with a single document here and it was called catering catering something okay there we go that was pretty easy uh, before I insert that I can decide if I want to have it as link or as preview as a like like we saw uh, already here and if I'm it's loading already here and I click a little bit fast um, then you have the full Excel file in here you can even navigate through the individual sheets of the Excel file if there are some like not in that case um, and as I mentioned you can upload files directly to SharePoint here like uh, if you're having a file that does not have a web app like a PDF or an image or so a graph uh, a picture um, that you need to edit locally on your computer, you can just upload that again here. And opening that in SharePoint, that's what I wanted to say, um, you'll find the same documents here. It's just, it's the same view, it's just embedded in Confluence. And if, you, if you're using uh, Confluence Server or Data Center, then you're also having the chance to um, use your Confluence wiki. You have the chance to embed your neatly looking and well-designed Confluence page into SharePoint. Whatever page that is now, um, that's just, just click one of the links here. And you have the whole Confluence page in here. You can even add comments to Confluence and create share tickets out of that. Um, and this is way better than the SharePoint Wiki. It, it works differently than the SharePoint Wiki. This is true, but it's also way better, easier to use. So if you, if you want to maintain a single source of truth for content, uh, but still use different um, different systems uh, for because each system has its own strength. This is the perfect um, the perfect uh, set scenario here. So coming back to my presentation, you saw this slide for long enough, I guess. <laughs> and this is just a summary of what I just shared. Uh, uh, so it's more like called a recording here. Um, this is available for Confluence Cloud Server and Data Center, and we support SharePoint Online and SharePoint Server in different versions. So it's like basically everything gets connected to everything. So, and we even support uh, our customers in migrating their server instance to cloud. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the majority of our customers is using data center or server. Um, and I can imagine many of uh, the attendees here as well. But people are moving to cloud and Atlassian is pushing that and is supporting their customers. And this is possible with, with our apps as well. So this kind of sums it up. Um, you know, every presentation is a nice slide with many interesting logos. Um, we're proud of each and every one of them. And there are way more that we are just not allowed to show. Um, but that's it for now. And I, gotta, uh, I guess I got to check if there are any questions here. Uh, so I just read it and I uh, got to understand it. <laughs> so great. I like it. So thanks. Thanks for that. Does the add-on also work in Office 365 on the cloud from a Confluence on-prem or in cloud? So yes, if you're working, uh, if, you, if you're using uh, 
it doesn't matter if you're using Confluence Server or Data Center or Confluence Cloud, you can connect it to your SharePoint Online or and the OneDrive that is at OneDrive for Business that is just using their SharePoint Online in the background. So if I got the question correctly, I just say yes. Um, to be to to be honest, um, in the Confluence Cloud instance, it's not yet possible to to use the Confluence web part in SharePoint. Like if you want to have a Confluence wiki page in SharePoint embedded, you would until now need a server version of Confluence. These are technical limitations that we may overcome at some point in the future, but not yet. So, but all, all of it, all of what I just showed works both in server and in cloud, and it's very, very similar. It's, it looks a little bit different, but it's very similar. So if that, um, if that doesn't answer the question, please post another one and I'll come back to it. <laughs> So what would be my recommendation? Use SharePoint for files and confluence for wiki-like documentation. Um, yep, yeah, I mean, I'd say yes, <laughs> but it depends. That's what my, 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 my professor in university always said. Uh, it depends. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we do, we, we at Comunado, we use both systems, but we're using the, the, the Confluence, the wiki, way more uh, intense than the SharePoint. We're mostly using the SharePoint for everything related to files and document management. And we, if you use Teams, for example, those Microsoft Teams, those files are also stored in SharePoint. So that's what it's for. Um, and what is, where it really works well, but for everything else, like collaborative, the editing content that's not a Word document or a PowerPoint document, we do that in Confluence. Our whole internet is Confluence and that's what's, what we're seeing from many, many customers. And also the, um, the one customer, ARM here, the, the big chip manufacturer from the, uh, from the UK is working in a similar way. So it's, apparently it's a common thing. So if I don't see any additional questions, then I'd like to thank you very much for joining in today um, uh, for today's, today's No Cabin Fever talk. And we'll be happy to see you back tomorrow uh, for a talk by Anshuman Dash from K15T about when pages in Confluence uh, grow too big and how to fix it. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Take care. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye.